I'm far more interested in um, solving problems relative to what I think the painting itself needs rather than what any sort of reference is telling me. All right, I want to welcome everybody back to Creative Juices. Today, we are talking with my friend Ryan Brown, amazing artist, art teacher. Uh, thanks for joining us, Ryan. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. The, the, the building we're in is broken up. It's got a, like three rooms in the basement. Uh, and a bathroom, and it's got uh, three main rooms upstairs uh, on the main level. And on the north side, I have a big room that is my studio. Um, and the middle room is our figure, model, uh, portrait. And then in the front room is uh, where they do the cast, the, the barred copies, still life, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. They'll, they'll spend uh, three hours in the morning, early afternoon on uh, cast drawing, barred drawing, still life, wherever they're at in their progression in the program. And then in the afternoon uh, from three to six, we do a long pose where we have uh, a figure model Monday through Thursday. So four days a week for three hours a day um, for four weeks. So they get 48 hours on one um, um, figure drawing. And in the evenings, Tuesdays and Thursday evenings from seven to nine, we have short pose figures. It's just two hour uh, uh, figures. And then Wednesday nights from six to nine, we have uh, um, portraits. So, so the students are getting 19 hours a week on a model and then, and then about the same amount of time on, on their projects. Uh, I, I'm demanding that they, they spend more time on their, their personal paintings uh, because mm -hmm. I've, I've found that as much as I believe in the academies and I've obviously I've been a big proponent for academic study since 2003 when I first experienced it, um, you know, with it being so much more effective than university education, um, I've realized in retrospect, you know, with, you know, 18 years now uh, of, of watching this and its effects, that there's quite a distinct handicap that, that the academies are putting on their students. Um, and, and I think that that comes from a, a avoidance of a discussion about art. Uh, it, 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 the, the academies focus solely on skill development, typically, and uh, completely avoid anything about composition, narrative, uh, basically mm. the post application of these skills that they that they develop. You know, what are you what are you developing the skills for? And what are your goals after you graduate school? Well, when they don't talk about that, what most students do for a decade after graduation is really refined student stuff. You know, then more uh, shadow box still lives, single head portraits, you know, basically where the program ends, they just continue that as a profession. And I think um, it's, it feels to me like uh, the schools are, are, they're gathering in a room, all these graduates that have developed all these skills and they're, they're at a piano recital and they all get up and passionately pound out these scales. And I'm trying to say the piano can offer you more in terms of, of writing your own music, in terms of the breadth of music that it can produce uh, beyond the scales. And so I'm trying to instill that in my students so that they don't just develop skills but they develop an understanding of what it's like to be a professional. And so that's one thing I'm trying to evolve with my school here is putting more emphasis on professional development, um, which is, I think you can do simultaneously. I think you can develop your drawing skills and develop your professional personal vision all at the same time so that when you graduate, you, you don't have this clumsy sort of five, six, seven years of, of trying to figure out now, what do I do? And, uh, and, and what do I want to say? And what is it in me that, that I'm motivated to share with people? You've already established that. Um, you, you, you should be showing and, and selling in galleries before you graduate. Most students have a hard time doing the thing that they're studying to do, which is crazy to me, but it's, mm -hmm. it's generally true. They're great when they're in school. You, tell, you give them assignments. They, have, they, they kind of know what they're supposed to do but they rarely go home and provide themselves with their own, not assignments, but projects, um, right. uh, you know, pursue their own ideas. 
And, and so, you know, I feel like it's kind of my duty to walk them through that. And, and uh, at least from, from the system's point of view, put that certain demand in there so that at least systemically we're trying to solve the problem. And then the onus is on the individual to actually follow through and do it. I mean, you don't get past that fear of making a painting by not making paintings. You, I mean, you, you have to make a ton of shitty paintings to get to the good ones. When you, you could do a beautiful academic nude, uh, you know, in your end of your first year, second year, you're doing beautiful academic nudes. You've developed a lot of skill and um, observation skills. Um, but to then translate that into how to paint a landscape or translate that same you know, information into how to maybe paint a, a clothed figure uh, in, a, in an environment uh, with a certain attitude and trying to narrate something like joy or grief or loss or pain, you know, something that's more conceptually driven it doesn't translate it. Mm -hmm. So all of the skills that you just developed are self-contained to the exercise through which you developed that skill. And it has no, no application to any other subject matter. You need to be, you, you need to think a little bit more narratively. You need to, th you need to think about um, if you're not, if you're not making that bridge, if you're not building that bridge between this skill development on the academic side and the artistic uh, um, application of that, of those skills, um, the bridge doesn't make itself. You, you, you've got to do it at one point or another, and, and, it, and it's going to be much easier for them to build that bridge while they're here with, you know, all of my experience to, to kind of guide them. Um, you know, something that I really love, which is the process of, of painting, the process of learning that the pure joy of, of being surrounded by beauty and, and recording it. Um, and so this is called um, a painter's inspiration, which is nature uh, for me anyway. That's my daughter, she's Aiden. She's cute. She's a little uh, white haired blonde girl. Uh, I just really wanted to paint that, that color of hair. It's just so beautiful. This is on copper, which is a fun material to work with. Uh, that's uh, my two oldest daughters. They were just um, walking around hunting for tadpoles and and that's what this one's called is is hunting tadpoles it's called elevated it's uh i guess it's yeah it's about 36 by 54 and i just love the 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 massiveness of the rocks and and you know looking uh, you know up from a a lower position and uh the abstraction of the fallen leaves the 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 algae on the rocks uh, this is just an invented landscape, but I would say the majority of the landscapes I paint are invented. I, I do a lot of plein air work. I think about painting differently. I think about um, plein air painting. I never try to make a painting uh, in plein air. I don't particularly like trying to make paintings from life because I find myself uh, reading and reacting and trying to be true to what I see, which I feel is a little bit more of a student mindset, which I really love doing. I, it's, it's, for me, it's more kind of uh, refining my skills, um, but not necessarily trying to balance the refining of skills with making a, a, an image. I'm far more interested in um, solving problems relative to, to what I think the painting itself needs rather than what any sort of reference is telling me. So uh, a lot of the landscapes I make are just from the ground up, um, completely invented, and this is one of them. It's interesting because I don't you don't you don't necessarily want to just paint what sells, but what sells is is that feedback. It's like the laughter after a joke for a comedian. It's it's the it's the feedback that helps you become a, a better um, communicator. Uh, obviously, uh, you know we're trying to do something that communicates visually, and so I have to pay attention to it, but I can't let it govern me too much. Um, mm. So, you know, there are certain paintings where I'm a little bit more certain that it'll find an audience uh, more rapidly. And then there are certain paintings I have no idea. I have, I have the podcast, if anyone inter is interested. I haven't done that many, but uh, the Unvarnished podcast, it's on uh, our YouTube channel, the Master's Academy of Art YouTube channel. Um, you know, there's some interesting discussions with some really cool artists. 
Uh, and it's supposed to be visual. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to visit artist studios and interview them in their studios, in their space. Cool. Um, so, that, so that you can get a, an inside look in that. And then uh, in October, I'm flying to Paris to film a TV show. Um, so uh, that's going to be a, like a, just a big, bigger, badder, more in-depth version of the podcast where we're going to be talking about the city of Paris, uh, the history of, of the city and, and uh, interviewing artists that are living and working there now. So um, that's going to be, yeah, that'll, that'll be filmed in October. And then um, hopefully by the first of the year, uh, it'll be ready to, to start uh, putting out.